Stephen Bent. Welcome to my exhibit, Papua New Guinea to Tibet, here at the Wolf Gallery at Maumee Valley Country Day School. This is a, a painting of a young girl from Ethiopia, from the Tasmai tribe. I met her in southern Ethiopia on a very hot, sunny day, and she's wearing a wig here that looks like all the different ladies passed on one to another and it ended up on her head in the end. And I tried to capture the colors, the colors of the environment there, the red, the red sand, and the heat, and the intensity, and also capture her personality. She was very defiant when I first met her. And I hope that uh, you can see that here. This painting is called Mako of Kyoto. In Japan, um, the geisha girls go through a training period. And while in this training period, they're called a mako. They are a geisha apprentice. I wanted to use a color that showed how serious this is, how, how secret this is, how mysterious this is, how, how interesting this is, and how feminine she is. I used this green-blue color to create a mood about what she is doing and what she is practicing. And this painting was used uh, in this year in 2012 on the United Nations Postal Administration stamps called the Indigenous People Series. So you can find that uh, on the United Nations Postal Administration website. Um, and I was very, very proud and happy to be chosen. This is my painting from Mongolia called Grandma Apple Cheeks. She is a Mongolian matriarch who we met way out on the plains there, west of Ulaanbaatar. And she was with her grandson. And they were just sitting quietly, and I slowly noticed what a tremendously powerful face she has. She has these amazing structures here in her face that reminded me so much of apples. Such incredible structure, so different, so unique. To their, to their race of people. And I, I worked very hard to capture this golden, warm color of her personality as she posed for me, and the strength and wisdom in her eyes here. This is my painting from Tibet called Turquoise, Red Coral, and Circumbobulation. I, I met this young lady while she was circumbobulating around the temple in Lhasa, and uh, she was wearing this beautiful headdress of red coral, turquoise, and these beautiful golden medallions. This is, this is her dowry or her wealth that she's wearing here. And she was so radiant with this, with this ornament on. And I included the colors from all the red coral, the turquoise, and the gold in her face to create this balance of color, light and dark, warm and cool, to create a picture that captures her personality. This is my painting called Forbidden City Princess. I was in uh, Tiananmen Square in China, and then went into the Forbidden City, and coincidentally happened to be there on the National Day. The National Day is the equivalent of Fourth of July in the United States. Everyone is out in the streets. Everyone is celebrating the Chinese culture. And in the Forbidden City, we started to see all of these children wearing these costumes that were very similar. And they looked familiar, but I didn't know what they were. And after uh, inquiring, we discovered that these children were dressing up as the imperial family that formerly lived in the Forbidden City. And this little girl, to me looked like she might have been one of the real princesses of the city. She had this royal or regal look to her. And uh, the painting, I tried to represent uh, the colors of this, you know, the, the royal greens. And what was very funny is that she had a little teddy bear attached to the side of the painting, which was so cute. And she's wearing this beautiful silk, silk costume of maroons and blues. 
It was, it was a great pleasure to meet her, and she posed so perfectly for the photograph here. She's quite serious, isn't she? These are two different paintings, one from Ethiopia and one from Tibet, that show my style of painting with bright colors, but also show different personalities with the use of colors. These colors are very dark to me, more earthy colors. These colors are more artificial, and more synthetic. These colors for me reflected the colors that I saw in the amber in her headdress in Tibet. This fantastic amber headdress that she's wearing. These are the colors of amber and all of the lights reflected in her face from the amber. This one are all the colors of the scarves that she was wearing. This painting is called Scarves Ablaze at Daylight. These Amharic girls from Ethiopia wear the most fantastically colorful scarves around their necks and shoulders and bodies, and I tried to include all of those colors and the intensity of her. We met her walking down the road on the way to Addis Ababa in Ethiopia, and she was on a long journey, and you can see how tough she is. I really wanted to capture the beautiful, beautiful color of her healthy skin. This is my painting from Uganda of the Queen of Uganda, Queen Sylvia. She is actually called the Queen of Buganda, which is the true name of the country of Uganda. And I, I met her in Entebbe in Uganda. We were working together, together uh, at a school called the Masuli School. I was teaching uh, the children there, and she had funded the building and the uh, the uh, maintenance of the school, and I tried to capture her warmth and her generosity in this, in this painting, and her strength. She's a very powerful lady who's doing so much to help her country, and I believe this painting is a big success because of that. You know, it was such a great pleasure to meet her. This is my painting of Irene from Uganda. She is a student at the Masuli School in Entebbe. She was one of the most beautiful girls that I met there. She is so stunning. She was so joyful and so full of life and had such beautiful form to her face. Uh, such incredible structure, bone structure, uh, and, and enjoying herself and expressing herself so well. I, I decided to completely use every color from my palette to capture her. And I included also these pink colors that are in the school uniform that she has to wear. At this school, both the boys and the girls have to wear a bright pink school uniform, which is so interesting. So I, I tried to put as much of that color in as I could. I hope she's doing well there in school. This is my painting uh, called Superman of the Highlands. I started to notice after a while in Papua New Guinea that the painting that the men were putting on their faces is very reminiscent of our superheroes that we, that we have in uh, Western culture. And I, I, I noticed this man uh, had a mask on his face that resembled not Superman but some sort of hybrid superhero of some kind. And I wondered about who he was in his real life, you know, where, where he came from, who was his family, where was his tribe living. And uh, I tried to turn him into this superhero in this painting where he is very powerful and very strong and looks like he has the ability to fly. And I believe it's a, you know, a big success. Although I don't think we have beards on many superheroes in the West for some reason. Don't know why that is. This painting is called Baby on Her Back. This young girl was carrying her little sister on her back around in a circumbobulation in Tibet in Lhasa, and I think she was having a hard day. If you look at her face, you can see that she, she is struggling a bit, but she's, she's holding it together. I wanted to capture the intensity and the beauty that she has. She's such a beautiful girl. I worked so hard to capture that. I hope it's a success. In Mongolia, I met this little baby boy uh, and made his portrait. 
His name is Bat. B-A-T, Bat. And I call this painting Baby Bat. He was the cutest little baby I had ever seen. And it took me a while to warm up to him. Or he, he took a while to warm up to me, actually. And uh, in the end, I was very successful at painting his cheeks. I really wanted to capture it with this, this round puffiness of his cheeks that is, that is so alluring. And to create all these colors that show his personality, this happy personality. We met him in a noodle shop in uh, Mongolia. The only food you can get in a restaurant are, are dumplings and noodles of all kinds. Fried, steamed, baked. And that's where we met him while his family was waiting to be served. This is my painting called Red Feathers. This painting is from Papua New Guinea. High up in the highlands of Papua New Guinea, I, I went to the Garoka Show, which is a sing-sing festival, a celebration of their culture where different groups get together and compete against each other to create the most extravagant costumes, the wildest dances, the greatest endurance, and the most beautiful music. This was one of the participants in the winning group, and uh, I got to know him over a few days. And uh, he was actually a very friendly, kind man, but in this picture that I took of him and that I made into this painting, he is incredibly intense. Look at the intensity that he has. He, he was very serious about the work that he was doing, and in the end he celebrated, but I caught him in the middle of his performance here, and he is in the thick of it here. He has beautiful decorations. The one thing that everyone finds so interesting is that those green little decorations across his forehead are actually made of beetle wings. He has gone out to catch individual beetles, pulled off their wings, and made this beautiful headdress. This is a young man or little boy I met in China, way up in the highlands there, up in the hills, in the southern part of China, in Yunnan province. He is a Miao boy um, who is of the Basha tribe, or in the town of Basha. And uh, these people are, what I, from what I understand, the last people in China to have their own guns. They actually used blunderbuss muzzle-loading guns up there for hunting, and he had his own little copy of one, and was walking around with it, and it was fantastic, and I, uh, I luckily got him to pose for me to make this painting. But he was a very serious kid. I, I wanted to capture how serious he was, and how, how independent he was. He was out by himself with his gun, and this painting, uh, really expresses that, I believe. This is my painting called Bactrian Camel Cowboy from Mongolia. He is a colorful character that we met out in Mongolia, way in the outback. He had a group of maybe 20 Bactrian camels, which are the double-humped camels that you see there that have a lot of fur and are the, have the funniest personalities. He was this, his sweet little man with the most beautiful ornamented costume on. And I put all of the colors of his costume into the painting to celebrate his personality. This is a painting from Tibet. I travel high over the Himalayan mountains to Tibet. This is a young lady who is circumbobulating around the Pakor, one of the most sacred sites in Tibet, in Lhasa, the capital. She was so full of joy, and we caught her in the bright sunlight. I really enjoyed putting in these light blue highlights that show, that show the daylight hitting her face. Tibet was an incredible place. I forget how high we were. I think we were up at 15,000 feet or higher. The air was very thin, and it was difficult to work there. It's such a successful painting. I'm, I'm so happy with this.